Hello everyone. Welcome to the series of economics in four minutes. This is Dr. Atman Shah. In this video, we are going to discuss the idea of returns to scale with isoquants. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel to find more videos on economics, SPSS, R Studio, and econometrics. Let's begin with the introduction. Laws of returns to scale is a long run concept. So all inputs are variable in the long run. So to examine the effect of changes in all inputs on output, we need to understand the laws of returns to scale. Here, all inputs are increased or decreased together. So it refers to changes in output as all inputs change by the same proportions. This is our production function. So here we have two inputs, labor and capital, and both inputs are variable in the long run. Let's understand the types of returns to scale. So first is increasing returns to scale. Here output increases by a larger proportion than the increase in inputs. So therefore proportionate change in output is greater than proportionate change in all inputs. In other words, to get equal increase in output, lesser proportionate increase in both inputs are required. So distance between isoquants is declining. See the diagram. Here we have three isoquants, Q1, Q2, and Q3. So distance between Q2 and Q3 is lower than the distance between Q1 and Q2. So to get equal increase in output, lesser proportionate increase in both inputs are required. Now, why we have increasing returns to scale? So initially, we have greater efficiency as firm moves from small scale to large scale production. Second is decreasing returns to scale. Here, output increases by a smaller proportion than the increase in inputs. So proportionate change in output is less than proportionate change in all inputs. In other words, to get equal increase in output, larger proportionate increase in both inputs are required and therefore distance between isoquants is increasing. C3 isoquants Q1, Q2 and Q3. Distance between Q2 and Q3 is higher than the distance between Q1 and Q2. So to get equal increase in output, here we have 100 units, larger proportionate increase in both inputs are required. Now why we have decreasing returns to scale? So as firm uh, becomes too large, it is difficult for the firm to manage uh, effectively as a single unit. And therefore we have decreasing returns to scale. Last is constant returns to scale. So here output and all inputs changes in the same proportion. So proportionate change in output is equal to proportionate change in all inputs. So to get uh, equal increase in output, larger proportionate increase in both inputs are required. And therefore there is no change in the distance between isoquants. So here we have Q1, Q2 and Q3 again. Distance between Q1 and Q2 and Q2 and Q3 is same. So in increasing returns to scale, distance is decreasing. In decreasing returns to scale, distance is increasing. And in constant returns to scale, distance is same. Distance remains same. If you find this video useful, kindly like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.